Everybody, this week is Parshat Va'era, the second Torah portion of the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus. And this week's Torah portion, the uh, bigger part of it, is talking about the beginning of the plagues and the process of the people leaving Egypt. So we have seven of the ten plagues uh, described in this week's Torah portion. But the por Torah portion opens uh, with, with a continuation of a conversation. It's mid-conversation. Last week in the uh, Parsha of Shemot, God sends Moshe to Egypt, to Pharaoh and to the Jewish people to uh, tell Pharaoh to let the people go. And Pharaoh, not only does he not let the people go, he actually uh, makes their workload harder. So he, he increases their workload, makes their suffering even worse. So Moshe goes back to God and says, Lama heresa, lama ze, lama ze Why did you make things worse for the people? Why did you send me? Moshe protests and asks God, why is he continuing to make the people suffer? So, uh, and that's where the Torah portion ends. And so we're left on this cliffhanger, a, a, a great theological question that uh, pl has plagued us really since then. Um, and in every generation uh, seems to keep coming back up. Why do the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper? Why do bad things happen to good people? It's all different variations of the same question. And God's answer, which is the opening verse of this week's Torah portion is curious. The Torah portion opens with God saying, by Daber, Elohim, El Moshe, and Hashem. God, uh, God, and the, the word used to describe God, we know God is referred to by this various names. But the name of God used here is Elohim. By Daber, Elohim, God speaks to Moshe and he says, Ani Hashem, I am God. And here he uses the, the Yudke Vavke, Havaya, the uh, ineffable name of God. So Elohim, God basically in the opening of the, of the uh, portion, in the response to Moshe says, I, Elohim, am Havaya. How does that answer the question? Um, there's another question that uh, if you look uh, a little further on in the book of Exodus, this is really the, uh, the primary source for this uh, theological question about, uh, about suffering, where, um, where, where, God, where Moshe asks God, chapter 33 of Exodus, he says, uh, show me, I want to know your ways. I want to know I want you to show me your ways. Essentially, as, as, as the Talmud uh, uh, understands this, this request by Moses, Moshe was asking God in, in, in clearer terms, why do the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper? And God says, I will show you my back that my front you won't see. Which also, how does that answer that question? So this, this whole uh, area of, 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 of theology, which is uh, theodicy, about, about the suffering, the good, the bad things happen to good people, how, how does God answer that question? One way of understanding it is that God says to Moshe, there is a when you see bad things happening, when there's suffering going on, that suffering is, or, or the way you interpret uh, it as suffering is due to the fact that you lack context, you lack perspective. There is a you'll see my back, or put in other words, see in hindsight, and hindsight, we know, is 2020. When you see things in hindsight, when you look back at the end of an ordeal and you can look back at the entirety of the experience, then you recognize God's goodness. And so similarly, God is saying to Moshe in the opening of this week's Torah portion, you ask, why do the righteous suffer? Why are the wicked prospering? You say, I sent you to redeem the people, to deliver the people. And instead, since you arrived on the scene, things have only gotten worse for them. Well, that's because you lack perspective. God, Elohim, Elohim, which is God as he hides in nature, is really and, and as God as he is judge, is really Havaya, is really God as he is merciful and compassionate. It's simply that in the thick of, of, of the experience, we lack the perspective to see it and to appreciate it. There's a, uh, a farmer whose horse once ran away and everybody felt so bad. Uh, your horse ran away, it must be terrible. How is he? He had no mo mode of transportation. And it was, uh, people came to comfort him. And the guy said, listen, is it bad? Is it good? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, a few days go by and suddenly his horse returns with 20 other horses. The horse had run away, found a bunch of wild horses, made some friends and said, hey, the farm is not so bad. Let's go back to the farm. So now suddenly the farmer has a stable full of horses. <coughs> the farmer now has a stable full of horses and uh, everybody comes and says, wow, look at that. It was so wonderful that the horse ran away and uh, brought back all these wild horses. You can train them, you can sell them. You know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And the farmer says, well, is it good? Is it bad? I don't really know. A couple of days later, the farmer's son is riding one of these wild horses, maybe trying to tame it. And the horse flings his son off of, uh, off of him and the son falls to the ground and breaks his leg. 
And everybody again comes, say how terrible they come to visit this young boy and, and, and say how terrible it is. And the farmer says, is it good? Is it bad? You know, I, I don't really know. Hard to say. Well, a few days later go by, uh, a few days go by and, and, uh, and suddenly there's a draft. War breaks out in the country and there's a draft. Everybody's being called to join the army. Well, they start grabbing all the uh, uh, able-bodied young men and the farmer's son, a, a, a strapping, strong, healthy young man, of, of, of military age is, un, is unable to go because he is with a broken leg. And so now the farmer says, you see, I guess my horse running away really was a good thing, right? He didn't want to comment until the story played itself all the way out. So a horse, losing a horse, gaining a horse, I have financial troubles, uh, um, uh, bills to pay, taking losses, hits, ups and downs, hard to say. But when it came to his child, and even his child breaking a leg, he somehow managed to not really jump to any conclusion, even though that's a terrible thing. But when he could have, God forbid, lost his son to, to the front and maybe never seen him again, uh, that's, that's when he suddenly realized, well, that all, all of that that had occurred was actually a, a, a good thing. But until you can see that story play out, until you see it it's in, in its entirety, it's hard to, uh, to come to any kind of conclusion and decision. God does the same thing. In, in the book of Genesis, right in the beginning of creation, uh, every God creates things and it says it was good. God likes the things. He, he, he enjoyed what he was doing. He appreciated what he was doing during creation. But it's only on the, on, on, on the last day of creation after God creates. And the verse says that God sees everything that he created. He sees everything, the entirety of what he had created. He was done. And then he says, this is very good. Now that he reached the end, even God himself says at the end of it, it is very good. So we need to uh, take a lesson from this and, and, and take to heart Moshe, God's message to Moshe in this week's Torah portion, that when, when we, we encounter hardships and challenges, it's important that we recognize that we need to have more context, that we need to have a, a perspective. Um, uh, rabbi, uh, rabbi Chaim Drizin is a, uh, a rabbi and a therapist. I remember they're talking to him once about, about therapy. And he says, you know, uh, therapy is, is, he says that when somebody has a problem, a challenge, so it's... Um, their problem is right here in front of their face. And if you've got your problem right here, you can't see anything except your problem. You can't function. You can't live. You can't do anything because your problem is right here. It says therapy is this process of pulling that away, creating some distance between you and your problem, just enough space so you can see perspective, you can see the whole picture around it. Indeed, this is a, a common issue when we, when we fixate on challenges and hardships and we, we suddenly take for granted or, or don't see the fuller picture of what's going on. So there's the fuller picture. There's one aspect, which is always recognize our blessing and always be grateful. Um, but, the, but, but another part of it is even the challenge itself. When, when seen in, with the proper perspective, which as God tells Moses, uh, is very Isa Sakhira, seeing it really after it plays out. In the end, we come to realize that it is all, all, all for the good. And so it's important for us to take note that even in the, in, in, in the throes of a challenge, even when things are difficult and things are hard, to recognize that we're only seeing part of the picture. We're not seeing the fullness of the picture. And uh, just conclude with another story of uh, the uh, Rabbi Shmuel of Lubavitch, the Rebbe Maharash, who uh, somebody had once asked him a question and um, he, uh, he, gave, he gave this guy advice um, to invest in, uh, in, 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 in preparing for a lot of guests. Anyway, people, have got, long story short, this guy was in the process of losing everything on this investment he had made. And then sure enough, something had happened and he, his, suddenly his inn is filled with people and uh, he, had, he had enough supplies and enough to, to take care of everybody, to feed everybody, and he, he made a nice profit. So he came back to the Rebbe and he said, how did you know? How did you know that things were gonna, things were gonna work out in the end? And the Rebbe said to him, um, you know, there are people that live on the ground floor and on the ground floor, you're limited in what you can see. He says, then there are people who live on the second, on the second story and they st stand out on the porch. When you're standing higher up, a little bit higher up, you could see further. So essentially what he was saying was, you were on the ground floor, you didn't see the guests that were coming. I was on the second floor, I was able to see those people. I was able to see who was coming, what was going on. But the point is we need to lift ourselves up a little bit, recognize that God carries us, God takes care of us, God is with us, God provides for us. And if we can just lift ourselves up, raise ourselves a little bit above, create that distance again between ourselves and our challenges, we will have enough perspective to then appreciate and, 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 um, and stay focused on the ride through the ups and downs of life and realize at the end, it is all good. Or as this week's Torah portion goes, immediately after this conversation with God, the, 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 uh, the persecution in Egypt ends 
and, and, and for the next several months, the Jewish people uh, experience a reprieve as the Egyptians get uh, uh, bear the brunt of what it is that they had, had done to the Jewish people, all of that leading to their exodus and redemption from Egypt.